Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am proud to present to you my brand new 2018 Honda Goldwing. And she is a beauty. So incredibly well made. I'm loving every minute of this bike. Paint really shines in the sun, doesn't she? Freaking awesome. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, you know, show you guys a little bit about this in case someone's interested in uh, purchasing one. Just a little few things that I've kind of enjoyed myself. Uh, turn this thing on here. I don't know how well the screen's coming out. Let's see, there we go. So I've got 267 miles. Uh, so just to go over the dash real quick here. Oh. Sorry about that. Had my headset connected. The radio's on, obviously. Go back. There we go. So, uh, as I was saying, so, <clears throat> as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by Senna, uh, you can see here, shows the air temp, total miles, and if you do uh, hit the set button, it shows you trip miles and scrolls through that. Range, 125 miles. <laughs> Uh, it does have uh, Apple CarPlay, which, if you scroll through the audio settings to Bluetooth to rider headset pairing, I've got my Senna hooked up. So when it's on, I get Apple CarPlay, which shows up right here. <coughs> but uh, this, this machine is absolutely amazing. But what else we have? We have different tour modes. We have a gear indicator. It tells you when the side stands down or when the bags are open. So if I open up the bag here, you see it's showing a bag open right there. And if I close it, it goes away. Uh, this thing has ABS brakes. So it's got <coughs> dual disc in the front with uh, six pistons for each caliper which makes for really great stopping power. So, uh, one, two, three. And the ABS is right over here, as you can see. <coughs> that is really sharp looking. Oh, man, I love this bike. This windshield, even though it's short. Oop, wrong button. I love that, motorized. And uh, when I'm sitting on it, I can see over the windshield, yet, even though it's not short, I don't get a whole lot of head bobble or buffeting, So, which is really nice. Uh, I may get one with a recurve at some point, I don't know. But we'll see. This thing also has navigation. There you go. So that's pretty cool. And, of course, the phone. So, audio source, you can go between, if you have your headset hooked up, you can go between your headset or you can listen to the stereo. And I would show that to you, but I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube, so. Yeah. And when you turn it off, the uh, shield backs down automatically, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what else? Self-canceling turn signals. Uh, Six-cylinder engine. Typical Goldwing. I like that it's blacked out, man. That is super cool looking. Super cool. Ah, so to get to the gas tank, there's a little compartment here and there's a button here. Boop, pop that. There goes your gas tank. You have a little storage compartment down there for extra. And this is where your phone hooks up. So there's a little cord here. So you can connect a US, your power cable, 
plug that in and stick it in there and you just close it up super easy so to change the mode on this let's turn it on again show you how to change the mode so this is now this is the six speed this is not the dcts you could tell uh, so I think the DCT, these are the different park driving modes. There's drive and park and neutral, I guess. So you can go to sport, econ, and rain mode. Now I've been riding in tour because the guy at the dealer said, don't put it in sport yet because you're not going to be used to the speed. And this thing is fast. <laughs> I mean, I have never been on a bike this fast before. It's crazy. So... Let's see what else. Cruise control, which I haven't used yet because I'm still breaking her in. Uh, I think the break in period is 600 miles from what the dealer said. And that's when the first oil change will be. Uh, what else? I don't know. I mean, there's so much stuff to this bike. It's crazy. Um, it handles like a sport bike. It, oh, it's got a hill assist, right. So if you're on a hill, I'm not really sure how that works yet. I haven't figured it out. But I think if you hold this brake in uh, really quick a couple times, hill assist will turn on. And it always shows up when you're first starting out, and then it goes away. And the ABS light turns off as well. So, I don't know. Let's go take a ride, and uh, you'll see how it is. Check back with you in a minute. All right, let's take this bad, bad girl out for a ride on this beautiful day in March. This thing is so smooth, it's ridiculous. Don't know how bad the wind's going to be. First time riding on it with a, doing a vlog on it, so we'll see. But it should be all right. I have to say, overall, Honda did a great job on this bike. This thing corners like a sport bike. It's crazy. Absolutely insane. So, I was going to record my ride home from the dealer, but honestly, I just wanted to uh, get used to the bike and not really think about recording at the same time, because I thought it might be a little distracting. But now that I've had a couple hundred miles on it, I figured I'd get my first impression ride, sort of. Whew. The wind is definitely wind windy today, but not too bad. So, uh, the guy told me the sales guy told me not to go over 4,000 RPMs, and quite frankly, I don't blame him because you hit that close to four, and this thing just takes off like a mother. I mean, it is really crazy how fast this thing can get. You can do 70, no problem on this thing. It is just insane. Take a little ride through the uh, through a park area. I mean, the brakes on this thing are so good. It is just this thing stops like nobody's business with uh, <coughs> six pist six pistons on each brake. So you've got twelve. 12 pistons stopping power, I mean, that is hefty stopping power, and on a bike like this you really do need it, because it is, even though they shave some weight off of it, it is still a heavy bike, but when you're moving on this thing, it doesn't feel like it. 
Now I had Apple CarPlay set up on this bike. I'm not really sure what happened to it. It kind of disappeared on me. I'm not really sure why. I had it set and then I went to go start the bike and it was gone. It was connected, no problem, but oops, sorry. But uh, for whatever reason, it seems to have disappeared off my screen. It would show up right down here. And with that, you could get a uh, phone call, shows your phone calls, shows your messages, shows any other little applications that could show like uh, iHeartRadio and Pandora and stuff like that. Down here in Tuckerton, a little windy. <clears throat> but if you want to scroll through the screen, you could use these buttons down here, right here, with your thumb. Super easy to do. And then you just hit the enter button to uh, select whatever you want to select, whether it's a radio station, stuff like that, an app, an app if you're using Apple CarPlay. I started off in second gear, I didn't realize it. <laughs> There's so much torque in this thing, it's crazy. Holy crap. Now, you can control the volume here as well, and the windshield height. So everything is very easy to get to, it's very intuitive. Although I have to say, it did take me a little bit of time to figure out some of the controls, or some of the options on this thing. Let's see. Um, I was going through the manual quite a bit just to figure a few things out. Now we can see what this bike can do. So first impressions, I mean this bike is very very comfortable. If you're going to go on any sort of long distance ride, I mean, this is a great bike to do it on for sure. Now, I know a lot of people talk about the seat not being very comfortable, but honestly, I haven't found it to be an issue yet. And I know there are a lot of aftermarket seats out there. Uh, there's a guy down in Texas that makes called Wingsoft or a bike so I think it's called Bike Solutions but he makes a it's called a Wingsoft seat and basically you send him the stock seat and then he adds padding to it but in all honesty I haven't found any reason why not to keep the stock seat uh, for me it's, it's just a very comfortable seat right now and I'm not saying you know I won't be stopping after like an hour and a half or two hours of riding but for that time, I mean, I haven't had an issue. I rode it home. It took me a couple hours to get home because I was taking all back roads. No highway. And, uh, I mean, it was perfectly fine. So I have no issues with the seat. I think the tires are uh, a Dunlop, a Dunlop Sportmax, I believe is what the, the OEM tires are. So far they seem okay. I mean, they only have a couple hundred miles on them, so I can't really say for sure, long term, what, what they're going to be like. You know, if I'm going to get how many miles? Maybe 10,000 out of them, I guess. So, depending on how much I do during the year, if I do close to 10, I might end up getting a new pair next season, but we'll see. Man, this thing is a rocket. This thing is a friggin' rocket. Holy shit. And that's just tour mode. That's not even like sport mode, which I don't even know what that could be like. I'm sure it's much more uh, sensitive in terms of roll-on power, but it's very smooth when you're in tour. So it's a six-speed transmission, which is great. I love it. The seating position is very comfortable. You're upright. Your legs are not behind you it's very uh, mid I guess mid, mid control in the sense where your foot is almost it's a, it's between your hip and your knee so it's 
you're not in a fetal position, but you're not, your feet aren't out like you are in a cruiser. I love having a motorized windscreen. I just think that is super cool that the, the Honda did that for their uh, the new, new generation Goldwings here. It's just really nice to have something like that. So if it's really hot out, you know, you could lower it. Now, I can see my eye level is perfectly over the windshield and I have no problems with any buffeting whatsoever. I have no, I mean, I get a little wind, but as far as buffeting goes, I mean, I was doing 70 coming down here and no issues, but right about here, beginning right about here is where the, you could feel, start feeling the wind. Right, right there is where you feel the wind. And so it's coming up and way over my head. So I have no problems with that. And like I said, you can get, I know uh, F4 Customs makes windshields and I know Honda has, a, there's a GT Euro Sport type windshield that has a recurve. So I may look into that depending on how much it is. So this is the non-tour version because it doesn't have the, the trunk on it, but I like the way it looks personally. I think it looks really sharp. Uh, let's talk about the mirrors for a second. The mirrors are absolutely rock solid. I mean, they're like car mirrors. I can see, I can see the end of the uh, the bars and the the clutch of the brake, and then I see basically my forearm, but not a whole lot of it. And you can look, and it's very very clear uh, in terms of stability. There's no vibrating whatsoever on this bike. Incredibly smooth. So suspension-wise, I I think it's awesome. I mean, it's got the new suspension down there, which you could probably see it bounced around a little bit. Um, I think it's it's really really smooth. Now, obviously, if you hit like a a pothole, you're gonna feel it no matter what. But overall, the suspension is really 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 great on this bike it's so smooth it, I mean it basically floats along and I think the fact that you also have a 200 size rear tire helps a lot and surprisingly when you're corner I mean this thing holds the line no problem oh, it's beautiful out today And the heated grips are a really nice addition as well. So you can turn it on down here. There's a little button down here below that has a grip with little wavy lines to it. So if you turn that on, it starts out at five and then it goes down. You probably pay attention to where I'm going. And then it goes down. Now I had it on three and that was plenty warm and it was probably like 40 degrees out, which means it was probably like, you know, close to 30 when you're riding. But I mean, this thing just tips into the corners. Super easy. Still got to be careful because you do have a little, quite a bit of weight going forward. But it's very easy to maneuver once it's moving. This bike is also very, very quiet, but you can still hear the engine, but it's it's definitely a quiet bike, for sure. 
but it's, it's got a great exhaust note though when it's, when it's idling. It sounds really great. Baby, it's got power to spare. Oh man. So what else can we talk about here? The stereo is really sounds great as well. Uh, plenty of power here cruising down the road. I mean, I've got a full face on, so it's a little muffled when I use it, but you can still hear it. But the cool thing is, when I have Apple CarPlay playing, which for whatever reason is not showing up now, uh, you can toggle between the headset and the stereo. There's a little button down here that's got a little stereo icon and a speaker icon. So you can, depending on what you like, you can keep it in your helmet or you can listen to it, let everybody else hear your music. <laughs> I'm going to go straight. I don't want to be behind a school bus. Now, the one thing that I had to get used to on this bike was shifting because on my cruiser, so I would have to get used to shifting because on the cruiser, the shift pedal was very huge <laughs> compared to basically what this is like a sport bike now. And so my foot was used to having a lot more room, where on this bike, on the Goldwing, it's a lot smaller uh, shift pedal. So I had to just maneuver, get my foot used to maneuvering on a, on a sport bike pedal instead. But I think I've gotten used to it at this point after riding a few hundred miles. But that's just something, you know, coming from a cruiser standpoint, if you're coming from that area, you might have a little issue initially, but your body sort of remembers if you've ridden a sport bike what it's like. Now, I haven't tried cruise control on this yet. Uh, it's, you know, because I'm trying to break in the engine still, so I don't want it to sit at, at I guess, one thing too long. You know, one rev area too long, although it's doing it right now anyway, so I, I don't know if it matters. But I'm just trying to wait till the 600 miles before I start that. I did go on the highway briefly uh, a couple days ago just to take it out. And, I mean, this thing will pass by anybody practically. It's really crazy how much power this thing has. I can't get over it. I really can't. <laughs> it is just too much sometimes. Now I don't know how the wind noise is going to be coming through the helmet for you guys. I guess I'll have to check when I get home, obviously. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad. I think it'll be okay because I'm not gonna, I don't get a lot of wind coming up from underneath because the fairing it's basically blocking all of that. I am getting some side wind just because it's a somewhat windy day. And maybe a little bit from the uh, from, from coming through the shield, I don't know, we'll see. But I mean I'm very comfortable back here in this pocket right now. I have no problems. Don't don't get fatigued at all from this. The trunk, the uh, saddlebags have a pretty good uh, amount of room. I don't think they're as big as the previous generation, like some people have mentioned, uh, but it's enough definitely for one person. And I plan on putting a, uh, a removable trunk on the back. I'm probably going to go through uh, Shad because they have a platform that you could put on and basically put on any top box that they offer. So. It accepts any any top box, so I think the the platform itself is like seventy seven dollars, and then depending on which box you get, can range from a couple hundred to like four hundred for the, the largest one they have, which I think is the the uh, S 
or 58X or something like that. Uh, reject. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't use the center, you can't use this while you're riding. You have, that's why they have this over here, which I always forget. Uh, what else? What else? I don't know. I guess that's about it. I mean, it's just a, an overall, it's a really fantastic ride. Um, if you're looking into getting a touring bike, <clears throat> excuse me, getting any sort of long distance touring bike, you should definitely consider the Goldwing. I think Honda just did a fantastic job overall with everything in here. I mean, there are a little, probably a couple things I haven't mentioned that I probably, I'm sure I'm forgetting, but overall i love this bike so far i think it's a great choice and i'm super super excited to have it and uh just looking forward to a great season of riding with this thing so yeah <laughs> but so anyway i uh, appreciate you guys watching i uh, hope you enjoyed this little video and if you have any questions or comments or something I didn't talk about, <coughs> excuse me, or something I didn't talk about, uh, let me know, and I will do my best to talk about it or mention it or go over anything that I didn't. Uh, if you want me to go further into detail about, especially something like navigation or you know entering in. Um, you know, like radio stations, whatever, all that kind of stuff, uh, just let me know. Alright guys, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day.